Hello, everybody. Thank you for being here with us today on this lovely and pretty toasty Monday afternoon. My name is Katie Earl, and I'm the coordinator of our University Express program. And I work for the Erie County Department of Senior Services. And we're joined here today with Mindy Yoder from Excelsior Balanced Nutrition. Welcome, Mindy. Thank you. Happy to be here. Good. Well, we're glad to have you. And we have some new folks on, so I'll quickly breeze through my normal housekeeping stuff. And if you already know what you're doing, that's awesome. So you've joined Muted and without your video showing, and those are just the settings for our program today. It's not because you've done anything wrong. And we are recording the session, and if all goes as planned, I'll try to post it on our website later on this week. If you have any questions or comments for Mindy, go ahead and put those in the Q&A panel. We'll try to get to as many as we can in the time that we have here this afternoon. If you're on a computer, you'll find the Q&A panel in the lower right-hand side of your screen. Just click on that to expand it and send your questions right to me. And then if you're on a tablet or smartphone, touch your screen, that brings up your control panel. Then you'll see a circle with three dots. Click on that, then you'll see your Q&A. So we hope you participate and get all your questions answered. All right, so we'd like to thank our sponsors today, which is my Department of Senior Services, Blue Cross Blue Shield of Western New York, Excelsior Orthopedics, and Blue, no, nope, Wegmans, there we go, <laughs> for all of their support. And as always, we at Senior Services are here for you. We're at 858-8526. Now let's introduce the star of the show. Mindy Yoder is the founder of Balanced Nutrition of Western New York and serves as the manager of nutrition services for Excelsior Orthopedics. Her areas of expertise are sport nutrition, corporate and travel nutrition, eating disorders, and weight management. And we're glad she's here with us, Mindy. Thank you. The floor is yours. All right. Thank you. Thanks everyone for being here today. I'm excited to chat a little bit and um, excited about the topic today of uh, mindful eating on the go, assuming that we're you know, kind of moving forward, um, you know, beyond COVID restrictions and getting out and about a little bit more. Um, we've had some beautiful weather lately. So hopefully there's a little bit more travel and dining out and picnics and, uh, you know, backdoor patios and things like that coming up. So um, excited to present this topic and give you some different um, tips and tricks to, to move forward and, and get outside. <laughs> um, so from here, Whoops, why am I not advancing? You can try the the bay, uh the air up there though. Brain function. Oh. Mindy, you were muted. Sorry, we had no sound. So if you could just go back for maybe start at the beginning of the slide there. I thought it was just me, but turns out we got muted by accident. Oh, okay. Yeah, no, it's showing that my, my microphone's on. So, okay. Sorry about that. Now okay. <laughs> All right, yeah, I don't know what happened there. Um, all right, so uh, I was just saying here how uh, foods are fuel. Um, you know, it's our, our source of energy to support our brain function, our heart health, our digestion, energy to our working muscles when we're moving and grooving. Um, it supports our digestion, immune function, so a lot of different systems in our body. Um, I'm sure you've heard it before about, you know, silly analogy of, you know, it's our gas in our tank. You know, if you're gonna fuel up, pack up the, the car to go on a, a road trip this summer or go to uh, visit some family, um, you're gonna fill up your gas tank and refuel along the way on a long trip. So we really wanna consider our body the same that you know getting up in the morning, fueling our body and stop and fueling along the way. Um, there's, and then within that, you know, there's many reasons why we eat, um, when we eat, how much we eat, who we eat with, 
um, you know, lots of different factors that funnel into that. So learning to understand all of that, learning to understand how to fuel your body um, is going to help set you up long term for success with the over, your health, your weight management, um, aging in a healthy way and um, preventing disease, falls, things like that. So I um, always like to review that, keeping that into consideration. I know, again, topic is, you know, how, mindful eating on the go, um, but we always have to have that good, healthy foundation laid out for us as well and, and being aware of the big picture with that. Um, would you still doing okay with sound, Katie? All right, great. <laughs> Thumbs up. All right, so uh, managing expectations. So again, laying that foundation, laying the groundwork of where we want to be. I, I again want you to always be considering the big picture. So whether you are planning just a, a fun dinner out on the back patio with family, or whether you're traveling, um, I still want you to be mindful of the big picture and how it all ties together. Um, first comment here about learning and adapting. It, it really does take time. Um, you know, oftentimes we might have a specific goal in mind of improving a, um, something within our health, managing our weight, building strength, whatever the case may be. It's something that's going to happen and occur over many weeks, many months, many years. Um, you know, contrary to a lot of the different fad diets that are out there and popular culture that, you know, is constantly, um, you know, hammering us with tons of information, um, nothing's a quick fix. And again, whether it's maintaining your health or uh, adjusting something um, within your health, we need to keep engaged on a long term basis. Um, you'll see consistency, that word here in all caps. I usually say, you know, we're not looking at perfection, we're looking at progress and consistent efforts over time. So if you can just take things one day at a time, you know, what can I do today? What can I do this hour? What can I handle? What can I control this meal? That's what counts and it adds up over time. And it, it's hard, it's really hard to do because oftentimes, you know, we wanna, we wanna look at that end goal or we wanna choose perfection like our culture tries to um, infuse into us. Um, so with that said, you know, life happens, things happen and come up. Um, it might feel like a barrier or a little bump in the road, um, but again, if you can just keep that focus on the right now, that's what matters. Um, and again, I, I'm focusing on this to lay that foundation because, um, you know, when when a lot of my patients travel or are visiting with family, they tend to come in after with a boatload of guilt. Oh, I, you know, I Memorial Day just passed. I made some s'mores around the fire. I, you know, we cooked out and I had a hot dog and it's this over like overwhelming guilt that life has been ruined or their their weight goals or their health has been ruined forever. And it doesn't need to be the case. You know, if we can, you know, really regroup and um, manage things day to day, meal to meal, um, it's okay. We can enjoy those things and not have to have the guilt and not have to feel like our everything's gonna unravel from that. Because really at the end of the day, bottom line here, have fun. That's the one that should probably be in all caps, right? <laughs> you know, we want to have fun. And you know, the, the group I'm speaking to here, you know, you're you're leading up to retirement and you're in retirement. And that's, you know, what we all work for, you know, most of our careers, like, hey, I want to have good quality of life and travel and dine out and hang out with family and, and grandchildren and everything. And that's that's what's most important. We want to have fun and not feel like we have that pressure to be perfect. Um, so just some things to keep in mind there. Um, so as I mentioned earlier, there's lots of things that influence what we eat and how much we eat and why we eat. Um, and again, to do a little check in each day with all of that, um, I think is really important, especially when we're coming upon um, different things like, um, you know, where we're going, if we're dining out in a different restaurant, if we're going to a party, um, whatever the, the scenario might be, there's some different things we always need to think about. Um, you know, on the left column here, hydration. We've got hot, humid days going on. We're we're early June here. We're rolling into, you know, the heat of summer. Um, and you know, are you drinking enough fluids? And you know, do you want to enjoy an unsweetened iced tea? Go for it. Enjoy it. You know, it's a hot uh, summer day. Um, you know, and being in tune with those kind of things. Or you know, if you are hopping in the car to go down the thruway to somewhere, are you packing enough? Um, bottled water or uh, sparkling water or something to take with you to keep in tune with it along the way. Um, so I, um, well, for those of you on the phone, I'll read through the bullet points here real quick. So there's weight, eating history, our diet culture. So again, you know, speaking of our, our big popular culture, our budget. So, you know, oftentimes, you know, looking at coming out of a pandemic, looking into transitioning into retirement or beyond, um, lots of things might influence how much we spend or what we're going to get in that might directly influence how much or what we're going to eat. 
um, our physical activity levels, um, hy hydration I just mentioned, sleep, our sleep patterns, are we getting enough when we're sleep deprived? Um, when we're stressed or anxiety or anxious, you know, next line there, those things influence our body chemistry, our hormonal function and, and our food choices. You know, our body always wants to feel good and comfortable. Um, so that's when we tend to, you know, crave the sugar, salty, fatty type foods if we're, you know, exhausted. Um, that's a quick, easy energy source for our body. So understanding like, okay, I have a really um, you know, I'm sleep deprived. I've been traveling long. It's, it's easy to want to gravitate towards maybe a, a fast food item or something because it seems quick and easy. But, you know, when you step back and think, is that really the best choice for my body? And is that really going to refuel me the way I want to? Um, some other influences, availability of temptations. I know there's some family members I go to parties at their house and I know there's not going to be a darn healthy thing to have there. And I'm going to feel like crud when I come home because it's just, you know, sometimes we just can't control it and that's okay. It's one meal. Um, so my message there is, yeah, sometimes it's just one meal and we, we, we do the best we can with what we have. Um, peer pressure, there's always that too at parties. Um, you know, I honestly, being a dietitian, I can't go to a party without someone pointing out what I'm eating or drinking or not having. <laughs> it's, it's um, you know, there's, you know, family members that want to point out whether something's healthy or um, not healthy or they're going to get fat or, you know, there's just so many kinds of comments and things that make you kind of pause about what you're doing sometimes, even though you, what might be right or wrong there. Um, and then our environment, you know, again, where are we, but, you know, we're, we're coming through a pandemic here. We're coming through a, lots of um, budget crisis and different things going on. So there's some influence there into our mental health and what's available and who we're around. Um, so again, just being mindful of these different things and, and maybe you haven't thought about them before about how they might influence what you're eating and how you're choosing foods when you're sitting down, looking at a menu in a restaurant, how hungry are you or, you know, if you're with people that are going to be ordering the fried foods and stuff, do you feel comfortable ordering something grilled for yourself? Um, so, you know, I, I think being mindful of all those different influences and where your choices lie are helpful in making your own choices and understanding the big picture of things too. All right. So actually bef um, before moving on to that, so, uh, you know, just kind of in conclusion in terms of laying that foundation and, you know, maybe jotting things down for yourself, um, keeping your own little food journal or log, but identifying these things as you go through day to day. And, and honestly, when I meet with most people in my office here, um, a lot have not thought of these things before. I, you know, we I usually say, you know, don't feel bad because we were never taught how to eat in life. We might have had a, you know, 30 minute nutrition course in, a, in our health class. So, you know, I know that's all I had, maybe in eighth grade or something, you know, um, probably 30 years ago. So it's, you know, it, it, it we don't get much exposure um, and, and we're influenced by food packaging and um, family and cultural messages and everything. So learning to really be in tune with the big picture, I think is really, really helpful, um, whether you are traveling on the go like our topic today or just in your day-to-day -day life. All right, so now moving forward, like, okay, what do I do with all this information, big picture, everything I was just talking about and applying it to, um, when you're out and about. So again, just to recap, food's your fuel. So I want you to spread your calories evenly through the day and maybe even replace that, that word calories with food. Spread your food, spread your fuel through the day. Um, again, going back to that analogy of a car, you know, most of us aren't going to pack up our car and drive down south for a vacation or for the winter and um, wait till we're, you know, in a southern state to put gas in the tank. We fill up the tank here and refuel along the way. So again, our body needs that fuel and energy. Um, you know, again, going back to our cultural message, food is either good or bad, or it's calorie in, calorie out. And it's so much more above and beyond that in terms of how is this food going to fuel your body? How is it benefiting your energy levels, your ability to focus and concentrate through the day, um, your immune function, um, and so on. So um, thinking of food from that context, I think is really helpful um, as you're strategizing and choosing your foods. Um, and, and on the slide here, I have use your goals as a guide rather than an absolute, meaning, you know, trying to avoid that good versus bad mentality and, um, you know, enjoying things for what it's worth. You know, my message lately too, you know, under the idea of like, 
so many of us have been inside and away from our loved ones for so long at this point. So make a 4th of July celebration about being with friends and family. Make the, you know, family and friend get togethers about being with them right now and try not to get too caught up in the, you know, is this 100 calories too much or is this too much saturated fat? Like, I don't want to minimize those components. They're absolutely important to be mindful of and manage for the long term. Um, but just remember, it might be just be one meal, even if it's one meal a week, that's okay. You know, we, it's important for our mental health and our overall um, health and wellness to, to get out and about and be enjoying these moments. Um, so, um, but with that said, you know, planning with purpose and intention, and that's where I'm going to roll into the next few slides of planning out your meals and your strategy through the day. One thing that I would highly recommend, I mean, you know, most often when we're getting together to socialize, it's for like a midday meal or evening. I know there's some breakfast, you know, get togethers on occasion, but for the most part, it's later in the day. And most often, usually it's kind of planned. You know, you're going to get together with another couple or you know you're going to be going to a family get together on a Saturday. So with that said, planning with purpose and intention really means, you know, okay, I know that later in the day I might be getting together and not quite sure what might be available to eat. So I'm gonna control what I can earlier on. So still get up and have a mindful breakfast, a mindful lunch if you're gonna be having that. Eat strategically through the day still so that you're still fueling your body through the day. So that when you get to that party, picnic, get together, you have what I like to say is an appropriate hunger for that meal or snack versus being ravenous. So what I would highly recommend avoiding is saying, okay, I'm not gonna eat all day because I know there's gonna be a lot of junk food at that party. Cause then what happens is you arrive, you're starving, ravenous, wanna eat anything and everything you can put your hands on. So, you know, understanding that there's that variation and, and hunger levels of the, hey, I'm ready for a meal or I'm ready for a little bit of a snack to tie me over or there's that like I don't care what I eat just give me something mode and we've all been <laughs> in both of those modes before so um, you know trying to eat with that intention and purpose of um, structuring through the day. Um, another thing to keep in mind too is that our, our days don't have to be the same. I, I often hear that people you know just give me a plan to follow. I'll eat breakfast lunch dinner every day. I'll eat the same thing. And I have, I've, in all the years I've been doing this, haven't found one person yet that has the same schedule day in, day out forever. So learning to adapt and know that there might be some days you have three even meals and that's okay. There might be other days you get up and have a big breakfast. And then because of your schedule for the day, every few hours you're having a heavy snack to kind of tie you over and to fuel you through the day. That's okay too. And if you toggle between the two for a while, that's how, what's going to set you up for success and manage your health and energy levels, your glucose levels, your metabolism. It all kind of ties together and blends for the long term. So as you know that something's coming up, again, still try to be mindful and engaged with how your day is going to unfold and manage what you can. Okay, so um, with that said, you know, I, I was talking about, you know, managing your hunger and managing your fullness. So your satiety is, you know, do you feel pretty well managed and well maintained? Um, do you feel good after a meal? You know, I, I, I like people to eat till they feel full and satisfied, not necessarily like stuffed like you ate Thanksgiving dinner, but, you know, have you eaten enough that you feel good? You can be tied over for a bit, whether that's a meal or a snack. Um, so on here on the slide indicating role of protein, fibers, fat, those are more complex foods. They sit in our stomach longer. They take a little bit longer to digest. Um, and that's what's going to sustain us for a period of time. Um, and next listed here is variety of food groups. So, you know, really going back to the basics here, you'll see the myplate.gov website, which I really um, would encourage you to reference that if you don't already. But it really goes back to those basics of every day trying to eat fruits, vegetables, whole grains, your lean protein sources. Um, whether that's a, a meat or some seafood um, or beans or tofu, whatever that might be, your healthy fatty acids or dairy or calcium sources. All those foods provide our body with really essential nutrients that are going to support, again, all these systems, our brain function, our immune function, our digestion, our heart health, our working muscles when we're active. And they all depend on each other to function appropriately too. So, um, you know, we're not gonna we're not gonna try and gear towards a lot of the fad diets that might eliminate some of these groups or um, you know speak negatively against them. Um, you know, carbohydrates. 
are going to include your whole grains, your fruits and vegetables. So we really want to minimize a very low carb plan because that's our energy source. And if you look at those three food groups there, those are providing us with the fiber to help with cholesterol management, fiber to help with a healthy gut, which manages our immune function um, and our bowel function, our nutrient absorption. Um, and again, um, when we're eating this complexity, when we're eating this structured food, um, it helps sustain our energy levels, our fullness, our satiety over a period of time. That carbohydrate is going to fuel and energize us, and all these other nutrients are going to sustain us over a period of time. I'm going to put this together for you in the next coming slides and kind of break it down by meal or snack, but just again to give you that overview and understanding of why we suggest this um, is, is that it does, again, benefit your overall health there. All right, so getting into some meal structure. So I have some different things listed here, and these are all, you know, if you are out to breakfast, um, a lot of places do offer some healthier options now too. You're not stuck with, you know, eggs and bacon and toast. And, you know, while that tastes delicious, <laughs> you can certainly have it, but, you know, maybe look for um, some different options. So keep those different food groups in mind when you're making your choices. So the first selection here, oatmeal, excuse me, top of some chopped walnuts and fruit. You might have a glass of milk on the side and a hard boiled egg on the side. And I bet there's probably some of you thinking right now as I'm mentioning that, like, oh my gosh, that is so much food. <laughs> I never eat that much. I might just have a slice of toast or I get up and I have my banana. What I would suggest is maybe rethink that um, and slowly add on to what you're doing. Again, the idea of getting some gas in your tank in the morning. Because most of you, if you are doing that, I would guarantee that probably you would say, okay, by mid afternoon, early evening, that's when I'm really hungry. And then I have a snack late at night because I'm still hungry. So eating earlier is gonna help you manage your hunger and fullness through the day, but it's gonna help you with sustained energy and fuel through the day as well. Um, and if you're looking to manage your blood sugars, um, this is another benefit there to get you started and refueled. Um, I know it's it's um, you know becoming hot and humid, so oatmeal might not be that attractive right now. You can make it as an overnight recipe too, and you know stick it in the fridge and have it cold the next day as well. Um, a bowl of shredded wheat topped with nuts and maybe some fresh berries. Have a scrambled egg on the side or a hard boiled egg is another option. Um, maybe some whole grain pancakes. Um, I, I have found some um, buckwheat pancake mix and I add rolled oats in there as well. They become like thick um, and um, cakey, but then we'll um, have it with some fruit and some chicken breakfast sausage and a glass of milk. It's a really great, well-rounded breakfast. And you can find these things at different restaurants now too. So again, um, being mindful that, you know, um, the message here, being mindful on the go, um, it, this might be some things that you make at home before you head out for a busy active day, or these might be some things that you seek out in different restaurants. Um, you know, another component of being mindful is to seek out places that have these things too. If you're traveling, yeah, of course, when you, you pull off a throughway, there's all the fast food options and some of them are getting better um, at having these options. But I know, um, you know, we travel sometimes out of state to go visit family within driving distance. So we're on the road and I actually, I've got the Panera Bread app on my phone and I'll look up with a, a location kind of in our the direction that we're driving so we can pull off and maybe get a bowl of oatmeal or um, an egg sandwich on some sprouted green bagel thin and um, some yogurt or something so intentionally seek out places that have it too because I know it's very easy to say well you know this is what's available so this is what I had um, there's there's a little bit of give and take in there too where you've got to seek out what the options are and and maybe you know, drive an extra 10 minutes if need be um, you know, we often want to get to our destination or we, you know, want to go somewhere with ease. But again, you know, looking at if you're looking to manage your health or if you are traveling more, especially in retirement um, or on, you know, a lot of us are getting out a little bit more since we've been in for a while. Um, you know, the more you give yourself permission to have the foods that don't offer a lot of nutrients, that is when things start to add up. So, um, you know, we want to enjoy um, some of the indulgences, but we also want to make sure that the, the other good stuff is, is on our plate um, more frequently. So just some different options and ideas of things for some breakfast here. Moving on to lunch. So again, these are some ideas to seek out if you are in a restaurant or just some things you might consider to have at home. Because again, if you're going to um, 
maybe a, um, a party or something. Um, you know, we, we actually, a good example, were invited to a, a party this past weekend and they had um, pizza for dinner, but they also had cheese and crackers and pepperoni out as the appetizer. So <laughs> kind of repeat nutrients and, um, you know, I, I won't deny that they weren't delicious. I mean, but, <laughs> you know, can you be mindful? Cause we didn't, you know, weren't sure what you were having later in the day. So having a good, well-rounded um, nutritious breakfast and lunch will help kind of offset things and, and maintain your day. Um, so you're not going too high in sodium or saturated fat or some of those unwanted, um, you know, extra calories. Um, so a sandwich with multi-grain bread, so that might be a sprouted grain and an oat bran, multi-grain, you know, anything with those um, options. I usually compare to when we're looking at breads, if you think back to, you know, maybe like the, the lows of like the light wonder bread or something, you know, um, that we all grew up on, compared to these breads if you pick them up you know without even know what the ingredients list is or looking at the nutrition fact panel the white bread is usually soft and fluffy and super light the grain bread has some substance to it you can actually feel the weight in it because of the grains the seeds the texture of it so um, that's a good indication too but again going back to the health benefits it's going to help manage your blood sugars it's going to help you feel fuller longer it's going to help with your immune function your cholesterol levels so Lots of good bang for your buck and benefit to choosing those kind of um, bread sources, or maybe it's a whole wheat wrap instead with some tuna salad and tomato and lettuce, a slice of cheese, and maybe some veggies dipped in hummus on the side. Um, you know, something else I'll point out too, if you are traveling, um, we often will pack a cooler and load that up with some ice packs and pack our own lunch to take if we know that there might not be something on the three-way to step off to, or, if you are traveling and you're staying in a hotel that might not have a, a restaurant at it, maybe you seek out, okay, maybe we choose a hotel that's close to a grocery store. Can we stop at a store on the way to the hotel? <coughs> Excuse me. So that maybe we grab some of these options to have in our fridge. So if we're out hiking and taking a walk or going to a park or visiting family, you know, we have these options available to us. So again, seeking things out and taking that extra few minutes to engage and find out what your surroundings are and what's available is gonna help set you up for success. Um, another option on here, a salad topped with maybe some cold quinoa, which is a grain. If you're not familiar with it, you prepare it very similar to a rice. Um, but again, it's going to be loaded in fiber and protein, some good nutrients. Uh, it's great heated up as a side dish like a rice, but it's also really good cold on like a nice crisp romaine salad, um, maybe with some garbanzo beans and goat cheese and some chicken or hard boiled egg and onion and some dressing. And it could make out for a really good, well-rounded salad that's got different proteins and fiber and, um, you know, complex carb there to sustain you for a period of time. Um, all right, and then mentioning here leftovers from dinner last night, and I even put that on the breakfast slide too. I don't know if you noticed that, but you know, thinking too, again, forward, even if you're gonna be out and about busy, you've got a long day planned with family coming up ahead. There's nothing wrong with, you know, making a couple extra servings of your dinner tonight so that you can heat it up tomorrow. And then it's one less thing you have to worry about. You know, you've got a nutritious choice, it might just take a quick reheat, or it might just be throwing together some ingredients that are in the fridge. Um, and having that for breakfast or lunch, depending on what it is and what your choice is, um, that's going to set you up too, so that you're maintaining your fuel source and your energy for the day. All right, moving into some dinner options now. Um, and, and just to highlight too, as I'm going into this and reading them off, I want to highlight and point out. So going back to that slide before we got into the meal selection about choosing variety and trying to include all your different food groups for the benefit of all these great nutrients that fuel our body and keep us healthy. Um, all of these examples I've been providing for all these meals include different sources of complex carb or your grains, fruits and vegetables, your protein, leaner protein sources, healthy fats, um, and your dairy or calcium sources. So here, our first option for dinner is um, maybe some skewers and you're um, doing a little bit of like a, a Greek twist, um, you know, with chicken breast and green bell peppers, red onion and tomatoes. And um, after that's grilled, tossing them with a little bit of oregano for some flavoring. Uh, you can serve it with some, uh, you can find brown basmati rice now and you can get, um, you know, some hummus and Kalamata olives for some healthy fats 
feta cheese that can make for a great meal. And oftentimes when you make something like that, it's gonna make several servings. So that could be a, a nice reheat for lunch the next day. Um, taco night, I think there's so many twists and turns that you can take with taco night now. Um, you know, in, in choosing different proteins, chicken, black beans, you know, even um, on a hot human night now, a, a fish taco or grilled shrimp, you know, might be delicious. It's some fresh um, cilantro and herbs and salsa and guacamole for some healthy fats and fiber. Um, so you can get really creative with all the, the ingredients that go into a taco night, but also, you know, dining out too. There's some healthier options now too. Um, with the fish tacos or black beans and different veggies that go on there. So a lot of people tend to cringe over it, be thinking that, you know, oh, I'm bad if I'm eating a taco. Um, oftentimes what's going to go into that is, is, is the protein on there lean and maybe grilled or sauteed versus, you know, you can get some fried um, chicken or fried fish. So, you know, be careful about how it's prepared. Um, but, you know, you can load it up with veggies. You can still put cheese on there. That's a great source of protein and calcium, but we just have to manage how much we put, which I know is hard to do sometimes because I could probably eat a whole block of cheddar cheese and be happy. So, um, but we just need to limit how much we're doing that again because of the saturated fat, but it's still a great nutrition, um, nutritious choice. So, um, and then things like the sour cream, you know, a little dab is helpful and, and can go a long way. Um, so homemade pizza is made at night or excuse me at home. Um, but there's also pizza out now too, where you can get the grain crust or you can get cauliflower crust. You can get, um, little single serve, you know, your personal pizza size pizzas, but you can load it up with veggies or a lean protein and have a side salad with it, um, to, to somewhat balance things out. So again, um, you know, you, you can create a lot of options there and be mindful with what you're doing. Um, these are a lot of things that you can seek out if you're in a restaurant. Something that I would suggest looking at. So, you know, if you are dining out at a, a friend or family's house and there's a party and there's different options available, um, take a look at what's on the, the buffet. You know, are there protein sources? Where are the vegetables? What are the different sides? Um, so, you know, we could take a kind of traditional, um, you know, summer picnic fair and look at hot dogs, hamburgs the mac and potato salad, and maybe there's a fresh green salad there, corn on the cob. You can certainly enjoy all that. So maybe you pick um, your hot dog or hamburg. So there's your protein source. Can you get cheese on the burger? Um, maybe you have like a, you know, fill up half your plate with the, the green salad, and then maybe have a little like spoonful of a, a macaroni salad if you wanted to, and have an ear of corn. A lot of people are really nervous about that, thinking that they're gonna, um, gain weight or have diabetes because they've eaten an ear of corn, but it, you know, put it into the context of, are you also getting other complex nutrients there? Are you getting other fibrous material and protein to help slow down digestion and manage it? You know, it's a little different if you sit down and have a couple hot dogs with buns and a cup of, you know, sweetened iced tea and three ears of corn, like that's going to shift your blood sugars and maybe lead to some excessive calories. But you can really make a nice, well-rounded plate of our traditional, you know, picnic affair and, um, and still maintain your health and enjoy it. So, you know, I wouldn't recommend it every night, but, um, you know, you can certainly enjoy it um, and be okay. All right, so some snacks, I, I'll read it for those of you on the phone um, and then give a little bit of explanation here. So cheese stick with nuts and fruit, yogurt topped with fruit, you could throw in granola, chopped nuts there, um, cottage cheese topped with fruit, even cottage cheese with like a tablespoon of peanut butter, or almond butter and a dash of cinnamon is a tasty snack. Um, whole grain crackers and cheese, veggies dipped in hummus. Um, whole grain tortilla um, chips topped with melted cheese and dip that in guacamole or maybe salsa. Uh, granola bar, if you're looking for a little bit of add on, some butter and a glass of milk on the side. Um, maybe you have like a grain based bar, like Kind Bars, they've got the healthy grain bar, um, but just something with like oats and grains in it versus just an, um, mostly nuts. Um, having that with a cheese stick or a glass of milk. Um, an RX bar that's a different brand. It's it's made with um, egg whites and nuts and um, dates, and there's all different flavors. It's pretty good. It's a few hundred calories, but it's nice and um, sustaining. It's going to tie you over for a little bit of a, a time. Um, dried fruit with an ounce of nuts, or maybe it's a jerky or some turkey pepperoni with a piece of fruit. Um, so again, notice all these examples where different sources of protein, maybe some different with uh, um, 
some carbohydrate. Um, and then there's some healthy fats mixed in there too from maybe the nuts or guacamole, a nut butter, like an almond butter or peanut butter. So when you're choosing your snacks, so think of if you're driving in a long car ride, if you're out at a park and having a picnic and um, you know, you're not gonna be eating for a few hours, maybe have a snack beforehand. Um, maybe you're going to a party that starts at six o'clock and dinner isn't gonna be served till 7.30. Um, maybe you need, before you leave the house, you have one of these kind of snacks to tie you over a little bit. So again, you go to the party and have that appropriate hunger for the meal or snack. Um, you know, so have some of these th things on hand um, and um, you know, that's gonna, what, that is going to be what's going to tie you over. So again, carbohydrate sources, those fruits, vegetables, grains, like your crackers or granola bar, are that going to be your fuel and energy. The other more complex substance, like your um, fats from the guacamole or nut butter, um, your nuts, the proteins from the cheese, the yogurt, the jerky, um, just for example, those are what going to satiate you and tie you over for a period of time. So what I would not recommend to do is maybe have a handful of pretzels and say, okay, those taste great. Okay, I'll have another handful of pretzels. Those taste great. I'm still hungry. I'll have another handful of pretzels. So that's really easy to do. They taste good, but they're going to digest quickly. They're not going to sit in your stomach and tie you over for a period of time. So try to have a few different items of different um, nutrient values so you get that energy and fuel and you're tied over for a little bit. All right, so going back to that comment of life happens. So, you know, it's great to have all these food lists and meal ideas and stuff, but things come up and things don't always go according to plan. Um, but also hopefully, you know, you've got a lot of different things going on and you're having fun with things. So I often like to talk about, you know, what's in your toolbox? I would highly recommend to take a look at, you know, what's in your freezer, what's in your pantry at home? What do you have on hand? So if, um, you know, you, your planned meal doesn't happen or, um, you know, um, I don't know, maybe you do have to hop on the road and get away sooner, or maybe you do at the last minute say, hey, let's get away for the day and go to the lake or something. So what do you have on hand so that you've got quick fix items for grab and go, maybe some items for, um, you know, prep that you want. Um, but with that too, you know, look at some different restaurant menu items. Look at, you know, like I was saying earlier about how I've got the Panera Bread app on my phone. Look at, look in advance for other um, restaurants at your destination where you're going that you could seek out. Where are the grocery stores? Take that time to be engaged and understand what's in your surroundings and your environment, what you need to have on hand. That's what sets you up for success. And that's what's gonna help alleviate some of that guilt that's often there or that kind of panic mode where you're grabbing the whatever's available right there, right then because you're starving. So um, take time to build up your, um, your, your toolbox. So you've got things in your pantry, you've got things to pull from the freezer, you've got things, you know, do you have the insulated lunch bags or coolers at home and the, and the um, ice packs in the freezer? So you can just pack things in and be on your way and go. Um, at the bottom here, um, so again, for those of you on the phone, I have like having different recipes, frozen meals, frozen items like fruits and vegetables um, are a couple other things that I didn't mention. But also at the bottom, I have listed difficult conversations and support from friends and family. Um, I think the more you can start to verbalize what your goals are and what your wishes are for what you're, you're eating um, and creating that awareness out there of what your needs are, um, it is helpful as well. And now the goal here isn't to change other people's opinions or how they manage their life, but to help them understand what your needs are. And some of that might be, you know, asking a family member if some different things can be offered a meal, or can you bring some things to help so that there might be some healthier options, or maybe it's adjusting the timing of a meal. Um, maybe it's, you know, being able to say, you know what, I'm going to sit this one out because you know that something might not be offered. Um, I know I've got a patient I was just working with the other day and they're going out for a celebratory dinner with her 90 something year old father. And, um, she knows the restaurant that her siblings will choose and, and what's going on. She just said, you know what, I love them. I'll celebrate in a different way, but I'm just not going to go because I know, I know what they're going to tempt me with and, and pressure me and say to me and try to make me feel bad. So I'm just not going to put myself in that situation. So I know it's a little bit more, it might seem on the extreme end, but, you know, just having, you know, taking a, a salad option to a meal or, you know, asking about the timing things so that you're, 
you have the support that you need and for what your goals are. Um, it's a difficult thing to do, but you know, I find more often than not that when people do have the conversations, somebody else say, says, I need that too. That's such a great idea. Or let's, yeah, let's change what we're having for dinner at, at um, you know, the 4th of July this year or something. So kind of cool how it starts to evolve and transition because yeah, a lot of our, our traditional um, you know, picnic and party foods might be, you know, loaded in salt and saturated fat. And yeah, they taste delicious. I'm not going to tell you not to ever have them. Um, but, you know, we still need to try and manage how we're, um, you know, consuming it and the frequency that that's at. Um, so with that said, you know, I just shared a little bit of an example, but I just wanted to give you some more examples of how I've been guiding some people and maybe it'll help you kind of apply um, the information I've given to your own goals and strategy. Um, you know, I, I have a woman I'm working with now. She's very close to retirement and she said, I want to be out and about when I retire. I want to be traveling. I want to be dining out. I want to be with people. So, um, you know, that's what's keeping her in tune with making her choices and putting more tools in her toolbox. Um, I have another one a woman I've been working with for, you know, several years. She's like this close to, to reaching the 100 pound mark. Um, but, you know, her goal is like, I'll be darn. I'm going to be on the floor playing with my grandchildren. I can't wait. This is my time. I'm going to do this. Um, and that's her motivation. Um, and um, another um, woman who she's really maintained her weight, but she's really shifted and taking a lot of these things into consideration and her clothes are fitting better. She has improved energy, decreased um, pain and inflammation in our body and she just feels better. So sometimes we don't really need to change our weight. You know, some, a lot of people think they might need to eat healthy to, to manage their weight or they might say, oh, well, my weight's fine. What's the point? But, you know, there's so much underneath it in terms of our energy levels and um, we, we don't want to have any health problems. So it's good to be in tune with, with how you're managing. Um, and I have another male I'm working with. Um, I think I've actually guided him to eating more. So remember in the beginning here, I was talking about eating in the morning and, and adding up and building up and fueling through your day. Um, he's begun doing some of that and he's already mentioned increased um, um, strength. Um, he has some decreased inflammation and pain. He's moving around better um, and he's reporting that his um, glucose levels and blood pressure are improving as well. So, um, you know, I just wanted to touch on some of these things to give you some examples of ways that it might um, kind of infuse into your own life. Um, and, um, you know, if you can just take a few of these different things and um, start working on them, like I said earlier, you know, just, you know, it's consistent efforts and um, taking things day by day that help add up. So, um, you know, I think you can apply a lot of it in your day to day life, but also as you transition into the travel and, and everything. Um, so, um, I, I left this towards the end instead of the beginning, so I can kind of tie everything together. So um, I am a registered dietitian, which, you know, kind of stands out from, um, you know, the rest of our cultural influence. Um, you know, when, when I meet with somebody here individually or, you know, when I consider who I'm talking to, you know, we're going to, as dietitians, think of and consider, you know, what are your current problems and concerns, what's your medical history, any medication supplements you're taking, your daily lifestyle. So understanding um, all the different factors of metabolism and, and influences in your health, your hydration, physical activity. We really get a good understanding of who you are and what your lifestyle is like. So then we can take and customize our recommendations according to your lifestyle and, and you know, make any modifications according to what your health needs are. Um, and oftentimes, you know, when you're coming into our office and meeting with us one on one, we're coordinating that with your primary care physician or, you know, if you're seeing other specialists, we try and communicate with them or take into consideration their recommendations as well. Um, so we are part of that healthcare team and, and helping, you know, helping you manage the whole big picture with everything. Um, and I will say before that too, before the next slide is that another great benefit with working with a dietitian is that when you're meeting with us on an individual basis, um, uh, many insurance plans now cover visits for zero copay too. Um, so, um, you know, if, if some of what I was saying here, or, you know, most of it was hitting home to you and you feel like, um, you know, getting some customized attention would be helpful, you know, I would recommend that you seek out a, a dietitian um, in our office. If you want our office number, that's 837-1145. Um, that's our, our main office here right now. We're on um, the sh we're in the uh, Sheridan Drive location for Excelsior. Um, so um, 
I am going to, uh, I have forwarded Katie. Uh, we've successfully emailed each other. <laughs> We tend to have some uh, IT <laughs> problems sometimes. So she's got a nice um, handout that she'll forward over to everybody um, about some considerations to make if you're dining out, things to look for when you're ordering or things to seek out on the menu. Um, and, you know, and, and that goes also, you know, if think of, you know, if you are in an airport, if you're in a convenience store when you're on the road or a, um, a rest stop off the throughway, um, look at look at, um, you know, the recommendations on this handout, look at the options that are available at that myplate.gov website that I was mentioning, you know, thinking of all the different food groups. Um, you know, I was in an airport recently. You can go in, like, even at the Buffalo airport here, you go through security off to the right, there's that little convenience store. You can get things like the prepackaged, you know, cheese and nuts and grapes, or um, you can get prepackaged hard boiled eggs, or you can get a container of chocolate milk and a granola bar. There's a basket of um, whole fruit there. So, you know, seek out again, be aware of your surroundings, get to airports early, look at maps, pull up, um, you know, just different restaurants and grocery stores. And like I said, you know, just try and stay engaged. And um, we're more than happy to help with that a lot of, uh, with a lot of that too. You know, I, I love to travel and try and keep up on that kind of stuff too. So loaded with lots of tips and tricks for you along the way. Um, so with that said, thought I'd end on this, you know, in a world where anything, or in a world where you can be anything, be kind. And, you know, I think, Given our environment and message, you know, globally here, where there's a lot of that message, but I, I want to take a different twist to that too and being kind to yourself. And, um, you know, if you're, you're thinking of these different recommendations and thinking where your goals are, um, you know, have fun, enjoy things. Um, but, you know, the, the more mindful and engaged you are, I think you can still have a lot of that fun and still maintain your health along the way. So, um, I think we've got some time here now. Um, yeah, just doing a, a time check. So if there's any questions um, or comments, we can open it up from here. So um, I don't know if I can see. Thank you. I got a thumbs up there. So <laughs> um, Katie, if you can point me in the right direction, do I stop sharing to see uh, the Q&A or how does this work? I can't hear you though. <laughs> We'll get this figured out. Okay. Oh, there we go. Okay. Is there a way that I can make this bigger? I don't think it gets any bigger. Is it just on the right side of your screen? Because I can read you what came through. Okay. I'll um okay. Then I it's okay. I can see here. So um my um Blue Cross Blue Shield federal plan covers a nutritionist. Are you part of the plan? Um we do participate with Blue Cross Blue Shield. Um in the federal, I, I, I'm pretty sure I've seen some of those plans come through our office. I will say of note for any of the insurance companies, um, we do participate here um, through Excelsior with most of the major carriers, um, but coverage might vary depending on the plan, meaning that sometimes they're diagnosis driven, meaning that if you have if your weight status is in an overweight or obese category it, it might require you to fall within that before it's covered or some plans might say we'll cover the visit if you have like diabetes or high blood pressure high cholesterol um, but most plans at this point under the preventative portion will cover visits for patients that are in an obese category for their weight status that's a bmi over 30 um, and there's typically zero copay with that so um, I do know that we've we've seen patients come through our office. I would just recommend to call your plan to find out what's covered. Um, but also, if you're interested in making an appointment with you, we always check benefits before the appointment too, so we're all on the same page. So we can certainly help you with that too. All right, let me see if I can get down. Um, you know what, Katie? If you're able to maybe read them to me, because my box is super small, and I I'm afraid I'm missing some here. I can't see the whole. That's okay. Sound. You can also want to if you stop sharing, um, then it'll be a little bit bigger for you. But I, I'm happy to read them too. Okay, 
let me try that here. We'll, um, ah, that's so much better. Thank you. <laughs> um, now they, okay, here we go. All right. Um, My husband is a patient of Dr. O's and would like to stay with the same practice. Um, I'm not quite sure what that's meaning. I'm assuming you're maybe meaning Dr. Austin Powski. I am part of his, or we're part of the same organization. So he refers a lot of patients to us within. So um, if, if that's what you're alluding to, I'd, um, yeah, be happy to see you and <laughs> happy to help out. I will say too, you know, I hear um, we do have a team of four dietitians. So um, if if anybody does call and I'm not available, anybody on my team would be happy to help and is perfectly qualified and, and happy to assist too. So just want to let you know. But we do um, work alongside Dr. Dr. Ostenpowski here. Um, okay. Some of the comments were about sound in the beginning. It looks like. Um, Okay, will you have portable food ideas like a day of running errands? Okay, so that looks like it was maybe so, so at the beginning. I hope some of the ideas I gave on the snack page were good. So again, think of things like a, um, a grain bar, um, turkey pepperoni sticks or jerky. There's a lot of great options out there now that you can like grab and go a cheese stick. Um, I would recommend, you know, if you're going out for a full day, maybe just pack a lunch bag. And, and I always say pack more than what you might need because, you know, we never know how long we're going to get stuck in a line or in traffic or, um, you know, I, I'm guilty of going in one store to get one thing and keep looking and get a lot of other things. <laughs> Time goes by fast. So, um, you know, or, or a day of hiking, you know, think of, um, you know, there's lots of great backpacks out there now too with little areas that you can throw, um, you know, some ice packs or a small lunch bag in there. So, you know, yogurt, or you can get little pouches of yogurt now. Um, there's a brand, Mama Chia, which are little pouches of pureed fruit it has chia seeds in there. So those are your omega 3s, healthy fatty acids. Um, those are a great fuel source too. Um, you can get them. I've seen them Wegmans Aldi target around here. Um, you can even get like the little pouches of applesauce or pureed fruit. There's another great product called fuel for fire, which is, um, and then there's another brand. I think it's Noka, which is the same. It's usually by the, um, applesauce in the grocery store with their like pureed fruits, but they've got protein in there also. Um, so those are, are good ones too. So, um, hopefully some of those ideas have helped, but alongside some of the other, um, snack options I highlighted earlier. Um, let's see, could you talk a little bit about low or fat free cheeses? Sure. Um, I would say try out a few different brands. I, I'm not going to name any names right now, but I'll say that there are some national brands that have low fat or reduced fat cheeses that I'll just be blunt and say they taste like rubber. <laughs> but there's other brands that are really good, but everybody has differing opinions. But there are um, a few brands in the cooler, if you look, that have reduced fat um, like by 50%, 75% that are still really great texture, mouthfeel, um, and melt well. Um, we always want to try and go low fat or fat free for cheeses um, that are made with cow's milk because those fats are saturated fats. So those are fats that we want to limit. Um, we don't need to avoid them altogether. So still enjoy your cheese for sure or yogurt or milk because they provide our body with um, calcium. You know, after age 30, our bone structure doesn't turn over the way it used to. Um, so we need that calcium in our diet. So great, great source there of calcium, but also of protein. Every decade we age, we lose a percentage of lean muscle mass. So that cheese is a great nutritious source to help both those points there. Um, but with that said, saturated fat, we don't get much bang for our buck there. Um, and too much of it can impact our overall heart health. So um, you know, I would seek out the lower fat free, but again, some, some are better than others, but we, we are all different. I think ones that I don't like some other people are probably okay with. Um, I typically like to recommend a low or, um, or non-fat when you can, but there's just some cheeses that are better full fat. That would just be, if you're, if you're choosing that earlier or later in the day, I would be mindful of what your other saturated fat sources are. And that goes the same with yogurts and milks. It's more so, it's not whether a food's good or bad, it's like, how does it fit into the rest of your day? If you know you're going to a party later on that might have some cheesy gooey stuff, 
seek out the lower nonfat earlier in the day so that it somewhat balances and, and helps you out there. Um, what are your thoughts on protein powder, just whey protein, or other ingredients like isolates? Um, I would say if you, whey protein is going to be a better option um, if you are not like vegetarian or vegan. Um, those, it tends to be more bioavailable, which means like operates a little bit more efficiently in your body, but that doesn't mean that the plant sources are bad or wrong. Um, so, you know, I would say seek out products that you enjoy. I know there's a lot of them out there that have like that are sweetened with like stevia or have different flavoring. I'm not a huge fan of that. I don't like the taste of it. I like the plain, but other people love the flavoring. So kind of a, a you know, a, not a direct answer for you, but either one would be just fine. It kind of depends on how it fits into your day. Um, isolates, you know, might be a little bit more expensive or, but, you know, if it, it's something that fits into your day and what your needs are, that would be fine too. Um, and, you know, um, okay. Just see, there was another one below that. Um, oh, great question. What's the difference between a diet or a nutritionist? So a dietitian, um, we are typically, you know, um, part of the healthcare team, but we have a, um, you know, a minimum amount of higher ed level education. Um, currently it's at a, a bachelor level. Um, in the next few years, it's going to a, a master's degree. That's the minimum required. Then there's a minimum amount of um, clinical hours um, that is needed before you sit for the national registration exam. So everything's evidence-based. So if you think of comparatively speaking, like your physician goes through a certain minimum amount of education, clinical hours and rotations has to sit for the exam. A nutritionist can be someone that goes through higher ed all the way to the PhD level and studies and does research and is very knowledgeable, but they might not have that same skill set as a dietitian. We are going to learn how to coach and counsel you, how to apply it to your day to day life or someone with a PhD that might they might just focus on metabolism or they might focus on healthy fatty acids or a specific area. The other thing to be aware of with a nutritionist is you can also search a nutritionist certificate that you can study over the weekend and print it out and put it on your wall and call yourself a nutritionist. So it's not always evidence-based. So we're always, as a dietitian, gonna be evidence-based. We're not gonna follow fads or um, you know cultural messages. It's what, who are you? Like I would think of at the beginning of the session where I was saying we find, or when I was explaining you know, what to expect from a dietitian, we, we wanna know your, your history, your background medications, health history and that's where we infuse okay this is what is good for you um, so that's a, a big major difference and that's why we are included in health insurance plans that's why we are typically sought out to coordinate care with your physicians and healthcare team because of that nature so good question i'm glad someone asked it <laughs> um, another question what about milled flax seeds and what can i put the flax in that won't taste gritty so um yeah they're going to be a great source of healthy fatty acids your omegas fiber a few grams of protein as well um typically you know i would add them if you're eat, adding them to anything that's been heated added them in after if possible because that heat might um reduce the um, effectiveness of those nutrients a little bit. Um, but um, typically like maybe oatmeal, maybe um, throwing them in a smoothie if you're making that, um, maybe on top of a cereal, but it kind of depends on what kind of cereal you're eating too. Cause yeah, if you put a little bit too much, then they're floating in the, the milk a little bit and are a little gritty. Um, so yeah, it kind of depends. I mean, you could, you could sprinkle a little bit on top of a salad or um, like a pasta salad or something if you wanted to. So you're probably gonna find something with like a similar texture so they don't stand out as much. Um, something similar too that's pretty good are chia seeds. So I mentioned them earlier in that little snack pouch, but you can buy bags of them just like the ground flax seed um, and add them to um, cereals or smoothies or um, you know different dishes as well. So a good little add-on item. Um, let's see another question here. Um, I know we're coming upon the, the three o'clock time, so I, I'm I'm available to sit and answer some of these questions if if you want. If you know anybody wants to um, exit out for other time commitments, feel free. I won't be offended. <laughs> I'm excited. There's so many questions. 
Um, another question here, I'm diabetic and a sweetaholic and even more specific chocoholic. <laughs> what can I do when I get such cravings? It's frustrating. That's a great question. And um, that's something we can certainly work with you on an individual basis. But one thing I would highly recommend is to consider my recommendations earlier of, of, of all those food groups and building that complexity. Every time you eat, whether it's a meal or snack, trying to eat like two to three different food groups at a time so that you get fiber and protein, maybe some healthy fats so that um, you are satiated. But consider things like sleep and stress. Um, are you getting enough calories through the day? So um, another kind of short answer to that is, you know, when, when we're tired, hungry, the first thing we're looking for is sugar. So I might ask you, you know, are you eating enough through the day? Are you eating frequently enough? Um, are you getting enough protein? Protein also helps block that reward center in our brain that craves those things. So um, those are a few things that I would turn to. So in an appointment with us, we'll go through like, okay, what's a typical day for you? What are you eating and how much? And that's where we're able to offer some suggestions of things to add in or maybe changing portion sizes with things. So um, that's where I would go that route. Um, so, but, you know, we don't need to remove chocolate because that's just good, isn't it? Um, all right, next, let's see. Um, my BMI is over 30. I will call to make an appointment. Great. Uh, isn't a granola bar fat laden? Um, not always, you know, some are better than others, but I usually look at things too, you know, what kind of bang for your buck are you getting? Um, there's always going to be a few grams of added sugar there. It's just part of making the granola and the, and the process. Uh, um, you know, yeah, some do have more nuts and nuts typically have good type effects. Those, those healthy fatty acids. So, um, we kind of have to look at the context of it, um, and the portion size. Um, but there's some, there's some good ones out there that aren't so terrible, but you know, you're also, if it's really grain based, you're getting fiber, protein, and some good nutrients there. Uh, great selections given for a car trip. Great, thank you. Does quinoa taste like rice? Um, it's actually pretty similar. Um, there's a little bit more of like a crunch texture to it. That's why it's really good cold on a like a romaine, like crisp romaine lettuce. Um, and there might be a little bit of like a nuttier profile to it from the flavor standpoint. Um, personally, I now that I've been eating it, I prefer quinoa over rice, um, but I still like rice. So I, I, I just think it's another great selection you know I've, I've got both in my pantry and like to make either or depending on what else i'm making it with so um i don't like fake sugars me neither <laughs> um do flax seeds need to be ground that's actually a good question yes um you're not going to digest and absorb the nutrients if you're consuming them whole in the same manner as efficiently as when they're ground so um more often i i, I feel like i see them ground um like when they're prepackaged in the store um then whole but um the whole are out there so make sure you're you're taking a good look at the package before you grab it off the shelf and put it in your cart so um i think i made it through i hope i answered everybody's okay, questions you. i think i got it <laughs> yep i'm not seeing anything else so mindy thank you so much Absolutely. that was great lots of great questions thanks for participating mm -hmm. Okay, well, everyone, I will try to email the handout to you by the end of the day today, if not by tomorrow morning. Um, but anyways, I appreciate you, Mindy, for your time and everyone who's on. Thank you so much. And I will see you all later. All right. Thank you. Take Bye. care.